Welcome back to Vampire. Following up on the quest about Darius Petrescu and Dorothy Crane, and their rather strange secret dispensary operation that they've got going on, we found out that Camellia, this person right here, has been rather conspicuously hiding those messages, the ones that say, go to Darius Petrescu and give him this message to receive help. They've been distributing them in flower pots. Yeah, I don't think I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Feels like I caught them red-handed. Like, there's actually a, uh, a piece of dialogue where you can go talk with the... Let me get out of this mode. There's a piece of dialogue where you can go talk with the poet back there, since they know Camellia. They're actually the one that told us about Camellia to begin with. And you can tell them that, hey, Camellia is involved in some sort of a plot. I guess that's a new hint that I've unlocked. But I'm not convinced at all that this dispensary is actually something bad. I mean, so far, all, all I've seen them do is attempt to help people. So, well, see if this is actually bad. I'm, I'm not convinced at all. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. Something I haven't tried yet is I wonder if I can enter NVIDIA Ansel. I, I feel like I'm selling a product when I say that. Try NVIDIA TM Ansel TM. I'll just, I'll just call it Ansel from here on out. Um, I want to see if I can use it during a conversation. I can, although the dialogue options don't disappear. Anyway, I just want to show you something. Not a very trustworthy face, huh? Kind of, you know, pale and pallid and dead and vampire-like because, well, Jonathan's a vampire? Like really, I would run screaming if I saw somebody face who, somebody's face who looked like this. Ugh. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Oh, they just can't talk at all, can they? Uh, what level are you, by the way? Level 5. On the Mesmerize. Medically, they're healthy? They're worth 5,000 XP. That might be the highest XP I've ever seen for a single person. Most of the people, like the shopkeeper and stuff, are around, I think, 2,500 or so. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Very well. Goodbye then. Wonder where I go from here. I guess let's go mention the plot to the poet. Good evening. Did you know the Mute Florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious Camellia. Are you not curious? Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. That's what I suspect. Ah, so there are two box quests. So this one is the main quest. Find the mailbox and the letter, the one that Darius Petrescu tore up. The journalist saw them tear it up. That one's right here. This one here is um, Barrett Lewis's box. Not mailbox, but just general box. And that's for a side quest. This is the one around where there's those super powerful beasts that I can't take on. Way too dangerous over there for me. But this one I can definitely do. Could just be somewhere around here. Ah! My dearest, most beloved children, I am so sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, my children, are still living in a country consumed by war. But there is also a war going on here in England. A war against poverty and against injustice. This is a war I intend to fight, despite my advanced years. 
This is why I'm writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now, and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must make now, to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me, and remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father. Well, I think that seals my, uh, that seals my first impressions, which is that they are definitely not doing anything wrong. They really are just trying to help people. There's no, like, <laughs> what did Jonathan mean by secret society? A secret society of people who want to give health care to sick people? Okay. What a hell of a letter. No wonder they tore it up and didn't want to send it. I probably won't see you again before I die. How do you say that to your children? It's... It's hard the content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. Ah, mesmerized level two required for this one. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. I think you're gonna regret it, because I'm gonna loot you for all you're worth. Bottle of cheap gin. The antique figure of the... Why... Why does it never actually open it when it says it will? Here it is. The antique figure of the... Vrykolakos. Of my many journeys, I believe I was the most amazed by my exploration of the Mediterranean Isles. And particularly the island of Santorini. Searching for traces of vampire presence in these sunburnt lands. Herod Herodotus himself refers to the island in his fourth book, and I'm personally convinced that there are many mysteries to be unveiled in this part of the world. Who knows that, even today, the island of Santorini is still considered by some as the most vampire-infested place in the world, way more than the Carp uh, Carpathians, and that its inhabitants are considered as specialists of the vampire hunt, or the hunt for Rycolacus, as they call this creature. According, according to the local myths, the Rycolacus is a dead person who does not decay, and who can show a vermilion complexion as long as he is gorged with fresh blood. He cannot enter a house without knocking and getting a response. Garlic makes him flee. He does not consume under the sun, but his skin blackens. He can change into wolf and other animals. What struck me the most is that the same name exists, with small variations from Mediterranean Sea to the Balkans. The Greeks call him the Vryolakis. The Bulgarians and the Macedonians name him Varkolak or Varkolak. The Serbians call him Vukodlak. Yes, Vukodlak, a name so similar to the Volkoid. Vol Volkold? Vol I have no idea how to pronounce these things. Volkode, we already know, my dear brothers. Just to write the few words now gives me the shivers. I'm personally convinced that we are here confronted to some, to some of proto-vampire. Maybe there are a missing link between the modern vampires and the creatures that came before them. If God allows me enough time, I wish one day to go back to the Santorini Island and find the trail of this antique and forgotten figure. From Drinking at the Fountain of Knowledge by Usher Taltry, Primate of St. Paul. 
primate? It's locked. Thanks, Petrescu. <laughs> it's so weird that I could just take this stuff and they don't even comment on it. Wait, is this the front? No, this is the back door. Good. Yeah, Dorothy is in here. Uh, looks like there's no loot around here in the yard. Upstairs. Wait, what was that? Letter to Nurse Crane, London, 31st of October. My dear Dorothea, when you read this letter, I will be on the boat that will take Anton and me back to Brasov. England was not for us. And I confess, I cannot wait to see again the proud hills of Transylvania. As soon as we are there, I promise I'll light a candle in the Black Church and pray for you to survive this terrible epidemic. I know that you do not agree with this decision and that you are determined to be more useful by helping our comrades exiled in the East End. But Anton cannot wait to return to our beloved country and see our long-awaited revolution bloom. He is my husband. I will stay by his side. I know we had our arguments and our fights. I know you would have wanted me to stand by your side and help you manage this clinic of yours. But now that I'm leaving England, be assured that if anything would happen to you, if you ever were in great trouble or danger, I would come back immediately to London with or without Anton. Please think of me as much as I think of you. I'm your affectionate sister, Theodora. New hint. Dorothy has a sister in Romania. Ooh. I think we're gonna need some help. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vasily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Thank you, nurse. Anything else I should know? He did lose consciousness this morning, but he's never had convulsions like these. He's not convulsing. He's choking. He's not getting any air. Skull! Hand me that skull! What can I do, Doctor? Um, Anesthetics? It's too dangerous to operate with these convulsions. Sedative, nurse. Do we have any anesthetics? I'm sorry, Doctor. None at all. Shit. I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Sounded yes, like you already doctor. did. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Right then, Nurse Crane. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? Oh, no. I... I can't see. I must... first suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. 
good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, Doctor. We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions, something primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. you're here to test my bedside manners. That was intense. I, I wasn't expecting... To what do I owe this courtesy? I wasn't expecting to actually have to make so many decisions like that, to, to suddenly have to do an operation and act like a doctor, when I'm not actually a doctor. Jonathan is, but I'm not. I don't know if they need a cardiac massage or an epinephrine shot. I don't even know what epinephrine's for. Um... It's really interesting though, that was nerve-wracking. Um, it was really interesting how Jonathan started to react to all the blood, right? They started to have their kind of vampiric reaction to it. They couldn't see and it looked like they were getting very, uh, like their urges were almost overcoming their ability to stop acting on the urges. And then right after that happened, you're presented with the choice of uh, like, let's suture them up or something like that. Like, like continue working on them or tell Dorothea to leave me alone so that I work on them just alone and I was I was worried I chose the option to keep working on him there and not tell Dorothea to leave but I was worried because I know this game plays a lot with consequences for your actions and I was worried that if I didn't tell her to leave what if Jonathan would bite her overcome by the, the bloodlust so that was actually like really tense for that reason and for, of course, the patient being, well, in horrible condition and then eventually dying. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. So that's where they're blackmailing. It's just to get money to help these people. God damn, they're a really good person. Hmm. There's gotta be something else we can do. Can't you blackmail someone who's just a piece of shit and not a vampire? But why Lady Ashbury? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. So, remember back to our conversation with Lady Ashbury. Ashbury was telling us about what dirt Dorothy, or well, we didn't know it was Dorothy at the time, but what dirt Dorothy had on on Ashbury to blackmail them. 
And she mentioned it was a list of like dates and times and locations for when patients had been drained of blood or something like that. Basically Ashbury using the hospital as a feeding ground. And I remember I, uh, Jonathan asked Ashbury, is it true? And I think they just like dodged the question or didn't really answer it. If Dorothea says that Ashbury is murdering these people, I, I trust Dorothy. That means Lady Ashbury is a problem. But also, if I do something about that problem, whatever that might be, how's that going to affect Dr. Swansea? Because Swansea trusts Ashbury. Well, apparently I have to say the blackmail must stop. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? I really wish I didn't have to say that. It's a crime. I know you're helping dozens or hundreds of people suffering from a plague by blackmailing someone who is actually very bad and a horrible person and taking the rich person's money, which they don't actually need because they're rich. It's a crime. Like, no. I mean, yeah, it's a crime, but there's nothing wrong about that at all. Embrace, I can just feed. Wow, so I have to do this. You'll forget all about this. I look away, but you resign. I'm ending this right now. I don't like any of these options. I guess charm. Or spare. So I look away, but you resign. That means they're still going to continue helping people, right? It's just that they won't work for the hospital anymore, but they'll still continue doing the work here at the dispensary with Darius Petrescu, right? So this is the best option, isn't it? In terms of helping the people of, of this town? I feel like I should go for this one because this one is only possible if you've unlocked it via a hint. Which makes me think it's like the higher value one, you know? But if I say you will forget all about this, doesn't that mean, I mean... What does that mean? Certainly that's going to put an end to this. Are they just going to walk away from this life and never help anyone again and forget that they were ever a doctor? <laughs> or just forget that they worked at the dispensary? I don't know. I don't think that's good, though. Let's go with this. No. Your place is here. Jailing you would be an even greater crime. It would. So? Here is my proposition. I'll look the other way on your little enterprise. In exchange, you will resign from the Pembroke Hospital and provide me with medical supplies when the need arises. Dr. Reed, that sounds like a business proposition. My accomplice then. No, just a privileged client. My research may require the occasional rare piece of equipment or ingredient. I'll pay good coin in exchange, fair and honest to help finance your noble endeavors. That sounds good. We have ourselves a deal, Doctor. Good customers are always welcome. Yes, Nurse Crane. We have a deal. Whoa. Mesmerized level, new citizens are available to kill. I failed a hint. The district will soon suffer the consequences of your actions. Is the game disapproving of what I just did? It says suffer the consequences, not face the consequences. That implies that what I just did was negative. But what I just did was definitely, definitely a good thing. Yeah, I'm happy that turned out the way it did because it's hard to, it's hard to tell exactly what Jonathan is going to say from those dialogue options because they don't uh, they're not word for word what Jonathan says they're just kind of the gist of it um, and it sounded a lot more negative or, or vague when I was selecting the option like at first it sounded like I was basically going to be blackmailing them you know you will provide me with medical supplies for me to keep quiet is what I took that as but apparently it was more of a business proposition which is much better
Look at that. There's a note right there, but I can't read it. Hold on. We can read it. Yeah, someone decipher that. It's locked, all right. It's locked, all right. <laughs> yes, it is, Jonathan. Let's see. Whoa. Did he just kill some patients? Or was that already here, this pile of blood and stuff? Someone screamed. What the hell just happened? Oh, more people outside. Oh, that means they've raided Darius' place too, of course. Shit. What am I doing on shotgun ammo? I have none. Okay. Burning boys! This Yeah, your buddy's dead. What do you think of that? Darius? <laughs> Hello, knock, knock. Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. I thought for sure they'd be dead. Good, I'm glad they're not. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. Oh, it's a print shop. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane. Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. It strikes me as probably very on purpose, trying to be humorous, making this person and Dorothea from Romania. I think the letter from Theodore, 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 something like that, also mentioned Transylvania. Romania, Transylvania, that's like totally the the lore center of vampires that must be on purpose yeah my mesmerized levels level two now 
Oh, dude, you have bronchitis. Don't have the treatment for it. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough, and clever too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Procescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man for sure, but a very poor writer. <laughs> Did you refuse to publish Richard Nithercott's previous works, Darius? Yes. His manuscript is as pompous as he is starched. Now there's a man who loves the sound of his own voice. You could have told him so. As a great writer recently said, politeness is the most acceptable hypocrisy. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. So, for the main quest, it looks like I have to report back to Lady Ashbury. Oh, what am I going to tell them? I mean... Are they going to continue blackmailing Lady Ashbury? If they resign to the hospital, I don't know. Maybe? Maybe not? They don't work there anymore, so I don't know if they can generate any more accurate reports about when Lady Ashbury comes by to feed or whatever. But at the same time, I mean, they still have the old ones, right? I'm not sure, but that's definitely going to be an awkward conversation. Because the way I solve that is not going to be to Lady Ashbury's satisfaction. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I think what I want to do before I sleep to spend my XP, which I have a pretty substantial amount of, before that, I'm worried that the district is going to get worse. It's already at serious. I don't want it to get down to critical or just openly hostile. So before I sleep, I think I'm going to try to make some treatments. Like Clayton Darby has fatigue. You've got, well, you're recovering. You've got a migraine. Uh, you've got bronchitis. So there's some people that I can help out. And I think that would increase the uh, health status of the district before I sleep. Maybe I'll wake up to a 
Better Whitechapel? So I'll do that in the next episode.